In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Document 360. Document 360 allows users to instantly create a knowledge base for your customers and employees. This knowledge base can be accessed privately or publicly. I'm going to be going through some of the core USPs of Document 360 and if you have any questions go ahead and drop them below. I tend to reply within a few minutes to a couple of hours and I'll also leave all the links below in the description as well. Document 360 came to me and asked me to do a paid sponsored video of their product which means they're pretty confident about their software because I am never biased in my reviews whether they're paid or I'm just making them for fun. Either way you're going to get a completely honest honest and non-biased review of Document 360. Let's go ahead and jump into the dashboard and start this review. Here we are in the dashboard of Document 360 and this dashboard is displaying all of the projects you have. When you hover over the project, it comes up with go to your knowledge base, the editor, analytics, and the setting. Let's head over to the knowledge base portal. So at first, the software can be a little bit overwhelming because there's always a learning curve. But if we just take a second to go through some of the settings like general documentation, which is where you can change your editor to either a simple markdown, simple formatting menu, or the HTML where you can embed media and stuff like that. Then you have your drive. This is where you can allow team accounts to upload any specific file formats onto the drive and then you've got analytics where you can exclude certain IPs so your data isn't skewed with anything you don't want. You do have things like team auditing which will let you know what's been going on inside your dashboard and what everyone's been doing. You are also able to create complete backups of your data and also restore them in this area. You can create custom notification channels and map the notifications for specific events that goes on inside your knowledge base. It will show you your complete notification history and then you can customize the email domain here. You can add in your own API tokens and then you've got quite a few extensions for your CRMs like Salesforce, Freshdesk, Intercom, Slack, Zapier and Chrome and Crowden. You can customize all of your design in this area under the knowledge base site and that includes navigations, custom design, article redirect rules, article settings and SEO, custom CSS and JavaScript and then of course further integrations right here. In terms of legal consent like cookies and GDPR this is where you can pull it all up as well as smart bars and ticket deflectors. Under the installation and setup this is where you could put in your custom JavaScript for like say a live chat messenger, install all your custom domains, add custom links and add trusted domain. In fact, there's quite a wide range of advanced features that you can use to create a really smart and secure system. And then you've got other things like team account, creating content access per user and roles and whether or not you want to make your knowledge base public, private. And you can also create a mixed feature where some of the knowledge base is private and other bits of the knowledge base is public. So we're going to move on to documentation and before I start playing around with the editor I want to show you the front facing site. So this is what your knowledge base will look like but you can manually edit this which hopefully we'll get to a little down the line and if we go into let's say one of the options this is where it shows all of the independent documents inside your knowledge base. Now the way it's categorized is by folders and files. Each one is a parent folder and then inside has the relevant files. Now coming back into this area on your left you've got the sidebar navigation which is kind of like what I just said which is folders and files. We have our main categories and articles so getting started is a category and then inside these manual documents are articles. By clicking on one it opens up the live editor and on this side you have your editable area and on the right you have the HTML version of it which will update for you. So an example of this is if we have a look here and then compare it to here these are both the exact same thing. So if we click here and then do view markdown this will show us the front facing customer view. Now let's say we wanted to edit this we want to make it with a strike through and let's make it italic. We can do that and then do public and then we can add optional notes and click yes. That's now been published. So if we go here and then view a knowledge base, that's now changed for us. But that doesn't look quite right and perhaps I've made a mistake here. So I'm gonna go back and on the right, 
we've got this navigation bar. I'm gonna click view history. And now it shows all of the previous edits we've made. So in fact, I'm just gonna go to this one here and I'm going to do open. And now that's actually restored it. So that's great. And I'm gonna click publish and then do yeah. And now if again, we do view a knowledge base that's been restored. If we want to add new files, we hover over the category we want to add files to, click on more and then add articles or import articles. So if we want to add an article, click add and we'll just name it this. And you have options to do it from a new article you can do it from a template you've previously made. You can copy an existing article or you can link to an external one. Just do create and now we're just going to publish this. Go here, refresh and now we have that article right here. So it's actually really simple and it's no different than using, let's just say the file manager on your computer and creating text documents and stuff like that. To organize and rearrange and stuff like that, just go ahead and drag it about and you can drag it into external folders. If you wanna create a new folder, just click new and then add category and you can decide what sort of page it's going to be. Now for your convenience, if you click on one of the articles and then on the three dots, click this, you can actually save this article as a template and then you can use it when creating a new article. You can then do also display in and then you can categorize where it will be displayed in the front view of your website. You've got the article settings. On the right, you have the article settings and this basically allows you to customize all the settings from SEO to privacy to tags, related articles, create review reminders, add featured images, etc. What's pretty cool about it is you've also got the analytics of each page and it'll tell you what's been going on. So how many likes, reads, views and dislikes and it'll tell you how many links are on that page and if they're working or if they're broken. You can also validate now and it'll tell you all the working or broken links. Let's move on to the export to PDF feature. Now heading over to content tools and then click export to PDF. Now one of the things document 360 wanted me to review was in fact the export to PDF and I actually found it quite difficult finding my way to this section. I even went through the tutorials area and watched almost every single video they had and I just couldn't really find uh, the video that kind of spoke about this. So it would be better for a bit more clarification on each of these features if you're a new customer it's gonna take you a while to try and find this. This feature is meant to allow you to design templates to customize on PDF layout, formatting, watermark, header footer, and text settings. So to create a new content template, all you do is click new content template, name it. So let's say this one's going to be for Beast Inc. And then you can set it to have a password. I'm gonna leave that for now. And then we're gonna go ahead and do save. I'm gonna go back into it and then do design template. And we're gonna do new design template. We're also gonna call this Beast Inc. And we can add our own cover page. And on the right, it's got the preview of everything we're changing. So we can change the text. We can add some custom logos. We can watermark it like so. You can see it's got confidential on it. And you can even change this to do not use or something on those lines. Change it to landscape or portrait and even add margins for printing. You can add a custom header and footer with a larger or smaller image of course change the design to the brand text it automatically creates the table of contents for you and then it goes through all the content and cover page we can then do save and then if we want to download it so i've just had to refresh the page um because it's just something's not working somewhere um and now everything's just loading quite slow i just checked my internet connection it's nothing to do with that um i'm not sure what's going on here okay so now when we are back in content templates we head over here go into edit and then under design templates you just change it to the design you wanted to export and then go ahead and do save and export and then do download it's now downloaded we're going to open it up and there you have it we have the design obviously your designs will be a bit nicer than mine but you can see it's fully watermarked now we briefly mentioned the analytics per article previously uh, but in the actual analytic tab we have a ton of analytic it gives us. So it gives us geography, where people are coming from. So we've had two people from United Kingdom. You can also compare the dates and filter the dates accordingly. You can also change it from knowledge base to knowledge base assistant. This is the performance area and this kind of breaks down all the leading authors, the articles, 
clicks, reads, likes, etc. Which categories are performing best and what countries everyone's coming from. Then it shows all the search data. So whenever someone searches for a specific keyword in the search bar, it will then show all of those terms and it will start going through it all. From team accounts, it shows you which of your team members are reading and creating articles and who's getting the most views and when they last logged in and stuff like that. Then it shows all the feedback, an overview of what's going on with all the links within the system. If there's any URLs or people clicking on pages, which are resulting in a 404 error page, it will all show here. And then of course the ticket deflector, and that's broken into feedback, satisfaction, and search. So now we're inside the drive area, and in this area you have the ability to organize all your knowledge base assets in a folder-like structure. Just think of it as a you opening up a file on your computer, creating a folder, and adding your files into that folder. You can do the exact same here. And it's very similar to the knowledge base structure as well, where you click create new, add a folder, do create, and then inside that folder, which you are in right now, you just do upload, and then you can upload, let's say, all your files and articles here. You can then view the dependencies of these files and again, download it, replace it, or move it to different folders. If you wanted to delete it, just hover over it and click remove, do yeah. And then if you want to restore that file, go to the recycle bin and that file will be there. Click it and then you can restore from recycle bin and do yes. Then we go back in to test folder and there it is. If you click on my drive, you've also got the search functionality. So uh, click on search and then do, let's say logo, and then it'll very quickly find the file for you. Now you can also cater this by tags. So if you select the file, it'll open at this and then you can just add your tags here and there you have it. You can also copy the URL, share it with other people and it will automatically download. Then just do update and now that file's got the tag. Let's move on to workflow. And before we jump straight over there, this is where things get a little bit more techy inside document 360 and you might find yourself being a little bit lost. So I wanna show you how to stop that from happening. So on your navigation bar here, you've got a tab called Feature Explorer. This will pop up a quick start guide. And if we head over to advanced options and then hover over set up the workflow, next to each one of these features is a documentation little icon. If we click that, this will then take you directly to a step-by-step text-based and picture-based guide. So we're gonna go over workflow designer. And if we click on this, it's very nicely structured fairly easy to follow and it gives you a lot of information on how to use it. A video would be nice on this but the article is in depth and then once you come back to this page if you click on add workflow status it jumps you straight there. When you start creating an article it might need to go through various stages and this is what this workflow designer is. So you can see step one draft you would add a description like this has just been created and then we do update and then we can add in a second status marketing review and then it can be for a marketing team member to check and you can set it to be read only or editable and then you can do add and then you can add another one which can be web developers review and i think you get the gist each stage should be added that you want the checks to be made for a specific article now this does save automatically so you can just leave straight away now if you want to assign this workflow to a specific team member here's how you do that you'll go over to document and then you'll go into one of the articles at the top you'll click edit and then under workflow status click on it and then it will show all of those workflows that we just set up so for example we just want this to be for the marketing review and then set due dates let's say for the eight assign an owner well there's only me in the system and then do set status then if we head over to workflow assignments right here it will then show the due date the assignee and when it was last modified and then you can filter everything and if once completed and you're ready to publish it you can select it and select things in bulk and then do publish or 
You can even update the workflow status to send it straight over to the web developers for review. And so the cycle continues. So what do I think of Document 360? Well, it's clear that they've put a lot of thought into this software. I like softwares which are very similar to the way you would naturally use your computer because the faster you can get started with a software, the more profitable that software becomes and you just want something that's going to be easy and intuitive to pick up. I think some of the more advanced features could be made either a bit more obvious and a bit more intuitive for more basic businesses, but this sort of software has actually been designed to work alongside large corporations. Yeah, I can actually see how that really does work very nicely. I also like the fact that they integrate with Zapier because that allows you to extend the capability of Document 360 tenfold. Now, I did encounter a few really slow points in the software and I'm not sure what was going on. I did check my internet connection and all sorts, but I think it might have been glitching out, could have been a cache problem, who knows, uh, but it did work in the end as you saw and then from that point it, everything else was smooth sailing. Now they do have quite a few video tutorials, one or two of them did have a few audio issues which should really be rectified only because it's such a shame that the rest of the videos are really high quality audio and then one or two of them kind of had an audio issue during it. Although there's a very well documented text-based guide in the knowledge base, I would like to see every single feature, every single area covered in a video tutorial as well. Because for people like me, I don't really like reading uh, mounds and mounds in text. I like watching. I'm very visual that, that way. And you don't really capture that in text and image as you would in video. So I would like to see more videos incorporated to this software. Overall, I actually think Document 360 does a fantastic job of streamlining the knowledge base side of a business. And honestly, I'm quite impressed with them. So the question is, would I recommend them? Yes, I would. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.